Good afternoon. Welcome to this afternoon's edition of the Richard Urban Show. I am your host, Richard Urban, coming to you from historic Harpers Ferry, West Virginia. Today's episode is, What is the Biggest Problem Facing Society? I'd like to start with a scripture reading. At the time of creation, God created man and woman with sexual organs as their emblem. As a result, that which controls the sexual organs is connected to all structural elements of the human body. For this reason, a man and woman unite as one in the act of making love and give birth to a child. What would happen during childbirth? Whom would the baby take after? The baby becomes attached to the mother's nervous system, so its own develops in a similar way. Can branches grow if there are no roots? The logic in this cannot be denied. When a man and a woman become excited during lovemaking, it is a principle that the mind and body unite into one. That is logical. Then through which organ can love, life, and lineage be connected continually through the generations? It is the sexual organs. What comes first, love or life? In this question lies the problem. Similar to the problems of the world today, which are caused by materialistic philosophy and the questioning of whether it is the mind or the body that comes first, we also need to ask ourselves what is more precious, love or life? This is the problem. What comes first? The order of importance must be determined. The answer is that love comes first. When God first established the ideal of creation, he did not do so centering upon himself. Instead, it was centered upon love, and that is why he created the world of reciprocal relationships. This is logically correct. That's from Chun Sung Young, page 1514. Welcome back. So this is episode number 101. As you know, I've had a hiatus for a little while, but I'll now be getting back to my regular schedule of twice per month. So today's episode is, what is the biggest problem facing society? And actually, the biggest problem facing society is family breakdown. And that is directly related to the misuse of love and sex. So let's look at some of the statistics for how the family is breaking down. Here we have the Census Bureau website. So we see that since 1968, the number of children living with two parents has declined from some 85%. Here they say 70%. But this is deceptive because in 2007, instead of saying children live with their married parents, they were counting any children living with two parents. That's not accurate. I do want to point out one other statistic, though, that paints a more, well, a more stark picture. So we can see here that if two parents are married, then the age of children living with those parents, whether it's young children, 6 to 11 children, or 12 to 17 year old children, is exactly the same as you would expect for married parents. It's stable. But look at this chart for unmarried parents. For young children, it's 50% are living... Um, with two parents not married. But when it's 6 to 11, it's 30%, only 20%, less than 20% when they're older. Why? Because these relationships are unstable. They break up. Let's move to uh, the Pew Research Center um, statistics here. This is, I think, a more clear picture. This shows two parents in their first marriage. Children were living with two parents in their first marriage 73% of the time in 1960. In 2014, that had dropped only 46%. Pretty stable for two parents in remarriage across the years, around 15%. But a, a great increase in cohabiting parents, basically none or nothing, <laughs> nothing here listed in 1960, even not that much in 1980, but now, 20 years later, 50 or on this chart, um, yeah, 35 years later, pardon me, 
7% cohabiting parents, and that is only continuing to increase. And a huge increase in single parents from 9%, three times increase to 26%. Let's look at one more statistical source. You're twice as likely to get divorced if you did this before marriage. So what is it that they're talking about? Having children prior to marriage will make you twice as likely to get divorced. And that was shown in the previous chart where we said that couples who are living together, as, as the children get older, less and less are living with that couple. Why? Because the couples are breaking up. The children, they're leaving. The children are just living with one parent, like with their mom or sometimes with their dad. That's not a good situation. So what's to be done about this situation that's been going on now for, wow, is that uh, 60 years approximately? 60 years since 1960, about? Well, first of all, I'd like to look at it from a more uh, god centered viewpoint. You cannot enter heaven without a family. That's the clear teaching that Reverend Sun Moon brought us and brings us. So you need not just marriage, but blessed marriage. You need to bring your marriage back into the garden, meaning, you know, out of the dominion of Satan in the sense that the first sexual act was a wrongful one and you can find out more by studying the divine principle on our website visionroot.org secondly you need children you can't just enter heaven as a happy couple you need all the aspects of love that's parental love that's conjugal love married love that's brother sister love that's love between parents and children and children and parents you can only have that, obviously, if you do have children. I'd also like to point out that all the problems of society without fail are linked to the decline of the family. How so? Well, if children aren't living with their married parents, then you already saw in those statistics is unstable. And all kinds of problems, the most immediate ones, are sexual abuse. Children who are living with a mother and a boyfriend are much more likely to be involved in, se in you know, sexual abuse, be abused. So that's, that's one type of, of you know, problem right there. What about crime? Well, we know that even in high crime inner city neighborhoods, if children are living with both parents, then they're much less likely to be involved in a st and I should add in a stable married relationship involved in crime or drugs or delinquency they're much less likely to drop out of school they're much more likely to do better in school what about our economy well we see now there's a worker shortage why is that well there's a number of reasons one is fertility is declining it used to be common 40 percent of women in the 60s, 70s, had four children, 40%. Now it's flipped over where like 40% of women only had two children. So there's a decline in fertility and child raising. What about this uncivility of society? Like people are mad, some people, anyway, they're pissed off, you know. Well, what kind of relationships do you learn in the family? Are you resentful, upset if your family is, is, has broken, if you only live with one parent? You know, are there adverse effects? Yes, there are many. And these can be some of them, as I pointed out in my other shows, that if, you're, if your dad left, for instance, and you're a woman, you tend to be mad. You're mad probably really at your dad. But, you know, you'll take that out in your other, or uh, how do you say, act that out in your other relationships. You know, like we saw when we were talking about Janetta Rose Barr's book, What Happened to Daddy's Little Girl. 
So, and, you know, all those things apply. They apply to men, too, you know, these angry kind of relationships. That's not healthy. So what can we do about this, this whole problem that I said, and it is definitely the most important problem in society, and everybody needs to be talking about this. Everybody needs to be doing something about it. Well, first of all, I want to give a hopeful message. I am giving a hopeful message. So regardless, say you didn't grow up with both your parents, or your parents are divorced, or you have a step family, or you had a single mom family, or any other situation. Well, you could decide right now for your future and your children that you would like to make it stable for them. You could wait to have sex till marriage, or you could return to you know, sexual absence before marriage starting right now. That would be a very healthy step for your children. Also, I'd like to ask you if you have children or when you have children or are planning to, what will you tell your children? Will you tell them, well, you know, I had sex before marriage, and, you know, just go ahead, no big deal. No, I'm quite sure you would like your children to do the most healthy and best thing and wait. And you should feel confident to tell that to your children, you know, whether you realize it early or later, that this is something you want to pass on to your children. We need to break this generational cycle. We often say, well, you know, single mothers also have single mothers. That is, that's uh, true, but it's not necessary. Meaning, you know, I've worked now for some about 20 years almost in the field of working with youth around the issue of marriage and healthy relationships. I find I worked in D.C. with a lot of children and young adults from southeast D.C. So obviously at least 75% of them didn't grow up with both their parents. Many of them never knew or don't know, didn't know any married couples at all. So but they're very happy to learn that, hey, I don't have to become sexually involved. In fact, it's not a good idea. And in fact, that will help my future. So they're very glad about that. And then they want to pursue that goal. So it doesn't take a rocket science to figure out we should be teaching this to our children. And in fact, that's exactly what we do in our program, Urban Life Training. And this is easily duplicable in any area. We have trainings at least quarterly, you can uh, take the training, you can access the materials on our website online and run with the ball and teach this, you know, to youth in your domain, you know, especially we encourage you to teach it in the local school and we can help you with those practical steps of getting to do that. So we want to teach absence before marriage and we want to teach blessed marriage. What is blessed marriage? What am I talking about? Well, I'm talking about capital B, blessed marriage. That means the marriage blessing that has been initiated by Reverend Sung Myung Moon and his wife. So that brings your marriage from the area of being outside the Garden of Eden, meaning after the fall, to a state where it's like it's before the fall of man. In other words, you change your lineage to God's side. John 8, 44. You are of your father, the devil. All of us were born of our father, the devil. Uh, that's a problem. We want to be of our father, God, not the devil. So that's why we all need the blessing of marriage. We'll all benefit from it. So we have, you can pursue that. You can find more information also at visionroot.org resources blessing of marriage. Also, another important step is to read the Word of God every day. And we are now in the completed Testament era. So that means we should be reading the completed Testament scriptures brought by Reverend Samuel Moon and his wife. And as I said um, previously, many times, also, we have like the world scriptures, one of those, which includes all of the world scriptures selections from that, which are about 80% similar, more than they're different. So we need to read God's word every day, the complete test of scriptures. And you, a good way to do that is to subscribe to the daily inspiration. 
also at visionroot.org. You can sign up there. And finally, you should share this good news with others. So, Reverend Moon taught us the ministry of home church. That means you minister to 360 homes in your area. And it's not just a minister of asking them, hey, have you accepted Reverend Moon? Have you accepted Jesus? Great, you're going to heaven. By the way, you need, you need to be blessed, as I said, and have a family to go to heaven. So what it is is a ministry of service. Yes, you'll tell people that, you know, you're doing this service. You know, you could, you'll tell them about your ministry, of course. You'll, you know, invite them to sign up for the daily inspiration. But you'll serve them in practical ways, the way that they need help. You'll help them. You know, you can clean up your neighborhood and so on. And that is an important thing. So there are many good resources for that. I like those of um, Stephanie Mann, the uh, Safe Kids Now program. And we'll be talking more about that. And I'm sure we'll ask her to be on the show too. So, there, so you want to uh, know your neighbors, love your neighbors, and help your neighbors. So that's the basic formula. So basic steps. Receive the marriage blessing. Be absent before marriage. Receive the blessing of marriage, capital B. Read God's word daily. Read the complete Testament scriptures as expounded by Reverend Sum Young Moon. Share the good news with others. Begin your ministry of neighborhood, getting to know your neighbors and helping them. One of the ways you help them internally is to help them read the scriptures. But you can help them in, and should help them in practical ways. This is called home church. So I do hope you have a very happy and blessed new year on the solar calendar. Actually, in unification is tradition. We celebrate New Year on the lunar calendar, which is coming up February 1st. I do believe it's February 1st. But nonetheless, it is a happy new year coming. Many people will recognize tonight, December 31st. Happy New Year. So this has been episode 101 of the Richard Urban Show. I do wish you a very blessed and happy new year on the solar calendar. And we will see you next time. Please do like, please do comment, please do share. And we'll see you next time.